Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are talking about the schedule for Battery Day and the Tesla shareholder meeting. We have a bunch of new feature updates from Elon on Twitter, Jay Leno reviews the Model Y, and we have some news on California clean air regulations. All right, so over the weekend, we finally got an update on the revised schedule for Tesla's much anticipated Battery Day. In response to a few questions on the timing of the shareholder meeting and whether or not the Cybertruck would be there, Elon said, quote, Yes, but we will have to postpone annual shareholder meeting, as still no large gatherings allowed by July 7th. Not sure of new date, but I'm guessing maybe a month or so later, end quote. And then followed that tweet up by saying that it would probably be good to combine a battery day with the shareholder meeting since they are, quote, converging in time, end quote, and that Elon was hopeful that they could announce a date after the week of the 4th of July. Then yesterday, a couple days later, we got a new tweet from Elon, apparently settling on a proposed or tentative timeline for now, saying, quote, tentative date for Tesla shareholder meeting and battery day, is September 15th, will include tour of cell production system, end quote. So a couple interesting implications from that, the first of which is the location. Tesla owners of East Bay asked if that meant it was definitively in Fremont, and Elon replied saying yes. And then of course, this also implies that Tesla has their own cell production system that they will have ready to demonstrate by September. This isn't too surprising. Tesla has been alluding to this for about a year now, actually since last year's shareholder meeting. But I think it highlights the potential scope of Battery Day. It seems like the last couple of weeks, the media has been really focused in on the possibility of a 1 million mile battery and vehicle to grid technology, very life cycle oriented things. But there's so much more to consider for Battery Day, including the scale of production, the production process, which we should learn about with this pilot tour, cost per kilowatt hour, the power and the charge rate of these batteries. Remember back on the Cybertruck unveiling, Elon said that they were targeting greater than 250 kilowatts of charging for the Cybertruck. Then we have to consider energy density, the battery chemistry is being used, how much cobalt's being used, things like that. And then of course, life cycle as well. But battery day isn't just about Tesla saying, okay, now we've got a million mile battery. And we're actually gonna talk a little bit more about that idea in the coming days. The other consideration here is that Tesla is relatively space constrained in Fremont. So if they do have a cell production line there, it is likely just a pilot line that Tesla has been working on developing the technology and perfecting the production process so that they can roll this technology out to the gigafactories for mass production. Perhaps this pilot line would then eventually be moved, or maybe it'll be kept around Fremont to produce batteries for something like the Plaid Model S and Model X, for example. So anyway, we can now tentatively reset the countdown to 85 days, or about 12 weeks from now, for Battery Day and the shareholder meeting, though in Tesla's SEC filing about delaying the shareholder meeting, they say, quote, certain specific dates, locations, and presentation formats that will maximize the probability of an informative in-person event are under consideration, and Tesla will announce further details regarding the finalized date, location, and format of the 2020 annual meeting at a later date, end quote. We'll just have to wait and see, but hopefully this will be the last revision to the timeline. We know that Elon on the Q1 earnings call said that they wanted to have battery day three weeks from that call. So I really do believe all the delays we have had have been a result of the coronavirus situation rather than a delay on Tesla's end in terms of the battery technology. The timing of these things is always very interesting to consider though, because we don't know if this will coincide with actual product updates from Tesla. We also don't know if any of these technological updates would be shipping in Tesla's products before Battery Day unveils them. That would seem like the best option if there are any sort of breakthrough technologies involved, but the further this gets delayed and the shorter time period that we have from when the delay happens, for example, Elon saying that they wanted to have it three weeks from the Q1 call, and then a few weeks later delaying it by three months, doesn't really seem to fit with that idea. I don't think they're going to ship new technology for upwards of four or five months, before unveiling it, so maybe most of what is going to be discussed at Battery Day is related to back-end stuff in terms of production, cost efficiencies, things that are going to have a profound impact on the business and on Tesla's ability to scale battery production, but maybe aren't as noticeable in the final product in terms of changing range specs, power performance, things like that. I don't know, I think at a minimum in terms of what we should expect from a customer-facing point of view would be a lower price through the cost efficiencies gained that we learn more about through battery day, a longer life cycle, maybe that involves vehicle to grid as well. And then I think we'll see higher charging rate capacities due to Elon's hints at the Cybertruck event. And we also know the Plaid Model S and Model X are expected in the second half of the year. Elon has said that will involve a new battery. So that would be a potential customer facing update as well. Lots to consider, but this September 15th timing puts us pretty much at the end of Q3, about a couple weeks before quarter end which if there were significant product updates that weren't immediately available in a high volume, it could make that end of quarter push that Tesla usually does a little bit trickier for Q3, especially so if there's a lot of inventory of older technology that Tesla has to move through. 
I'd be really curious to hear people's thoughts on the implications of the timing of the event, so let me know those thoughts in the comments. Moving on, we also got a lot more information on Tesla from Elon on Twitter over the weekend. First is an update on autopilot pricing for those people that have already purchased Tesla vehicles and did not purchase autopilot with those vehicles before it was standard. For those people, it had cost $3,000 previously to add basic autopilot, not the full self-driving option. Elon has lowered that to $2,000 until the end of Q2, so July 1st. We've talked about this nice little flexibility for Tesla to periodically offer sales on software options if they want to add a boost to any individual quarter. And with the expiration of this sale at the end of Q2, it looks like that's what Tesla is doing here. We'll talk more about this in the upcoming days as we approach quarter close, but I think profitability is definitely in play for Q2. If Tesla can produce even $1 of gap profit, that makes them eligible for S&P 500 inclusion. For Q2, I think profit really hinges on Tesla's regulatory credit sales, which are always very difficult for us to forecast. Next is a quick update on the timeline for the seven seat Model Y. Vincent on Twitter asked about the timing on that and Elon said, quote, probably early Q4, end quote, which is actually quite a bit faster than what Tesla has on their website. They say the seven seat interior will be available in 2021 on tesla.com. Could be a small indication of Tesla's move towards under-promising and over-delivering, or it could also be a good sign for Model Y production. Or if you want to go on the other side of things, an indication of poor demand, but obviously that's not my perspective. Next is something that has been discussed a lot with Tesla owner Silicon Valley asking Elon on Twitter if we could get screen mirroring from the phone to a Tesla screen. Elon replied saying, quote, maybe we'll look into it. We need to emulate a TV, end quote. As Tesla continues to add more and more features to the native UI, this feature becomes less important, but this still falls into the nice to have category. Until Tesla has an app store, it's not going to capture everything, so this would add some incremental functionality. Another feature proposal that Elon responded to on Twitter was the ability for Tesla vehicles in the driver visualization to highlight or emphasize other Tesla vehicles that they come across. Elon replied to that saying, we could probably make a fun punch buggy game with extra points for rare Teslas. This is something that I have wanted for a really long time. I think Tesla has the opportunity here to create something incredibly fun, sort of similar to Pokemon Go in concept, where for example, there are challenges to come across all the different vehicles. So you'd see a Model 3 pretty quickly, obviously, but it might take a while to come across an original Roadster. And while I'm not sure if the autopilot camera suite could handle this, it'd be cool if it could differentiate between the different colors. So you'd come across a white Model 3 almost immediately, but finding a silver, which has since been retired, might take longer. Same thing with Model S, where you might see these older colors like titanium metallic or dolphin gray being much more difficult and rare to come across and, you know, index in your system. Regardless of the colors, though, you could have the original Roadster, you could have the new Roadster, so you'd have to actually come across the prototype or things like the Cybertruck. And this can extend far beyond Tesla vehicles, for instance, supercharger check-in points or even destination chargers. And then you can combine all of this into one sort of gamified system with leaderboards for different countries, different regions, different localities, or even for different groups of friends. The tricky part with this is because driving does consume energy and not all energy charging Teslas is currently clean, you don't really want to create this incentive structure that encourages people to drive and cause emissions. Maybe only Tesla customers that have Tesla Solar are eligible for this kind of game. It'd be a fun little perk, and honestly some people are so competitive that it might push them over the edge to become a Solar customer as well. We know that Elon has said that he wants Teslas to be the most fun product possible, and things like this gamification of the use of Teslas I think has so much potential to add to that element, which just drives the value of the purchase even higher. This is sort of underscored to the last comment that Elon made on Twitter that I want to address, and this was in reply to a Clean Technica article on how Tesla became the most valuable automaker. Elon replied to that saying, quote, Tesla should really be thought of as roughly a dozen technology startups, many of which have little to no correlation with traditional automotive companies, end quote. We dance around this idea constantly, but I thought this was a perfect way to phrase it. Pace of innovation is what matters, and that's why Tesla has this startup mentality. If you follow Jeff Bezos or Amazon, that's very similar to the philosophy that they've had, always act like a startup, the day one concept, because once you stop acting that way, well, you're dead, and the next startup that is innovating is going to surpass you. This reminded me of the price target from JP Morgan that we talked about on Friday. They increased their price target from 240 to 275 on Tesla. A viewer did send me that note. Thank you for that. So I got a bit more insight into how they got to that price target. And now after reading that note, it completely makes sense because they say, quote, we derive our price target based on fundamentals alone, which consists of 50% discounted cash flow and 50% 
2021 earnings-based multiples analysis, itself a blend of price to earnings, enterprise value to earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization, and price to sales, end quote. Let me break that down for you in case you didn't catch it. JP Morgan is valuing Tesla based on 2021 numbers. That's it. That's as far out as their model goes. They do not model for 2022, 2023, or any years beyond that. Well, yeah, no wonder if you value Tesla based on next year's earnings, of course it's going to look expensive, but what happens when they grow revenue by 50% in 2022 and earnings by, I don't know, 200%? Well, then your price target starts to look really, really silly really, really fast. That'll either happen to JP Morgan or they will drop coverage. Anyway, back to the point here, you would never value a tech startup or multiple tech startups based on their earnings next year. That is not what the business is optimizing for. So pricing Tesla based on discounting their earnings from less than 18 months from now just makes absolutely no sense and is completely short-sighted. But at least it does explain the incredibly low price target. Next today, I wanted to give a couple quick thoughts on Jay Leno's Garage most recent episode. This is about a half an hour long, completely of the Model Y. It's already approaching half a million views on YouTube. And overall, it was very positive towards Tesla and towards the Model Y, saying that this is undoubtedly the future. And Leno spent a fair amount of time focusing on how the vehicle was made in America. Not much new information for those of us that follow Tesla closely, but one thing Leno did say caught my attention. He said in the first minute or so, quote, I think they've got about 12 to 14,000 of them, but you might not have seen them on the road yet. But by the time this airs, there will be more and more of them out there, end quote. So that 12 to 14,000 number is interesting. Of course, Elon spent a lot of time with Jay Leno. Perhaps that number slipped out during the course of their conversation, or perhaps Jay Leno is just looking at the vehicle identification numbers that are out there on the Model Y. We'll have to do some digging on when this was actually recorded and then compare that with the VIN sightings that we saw at that point in time. Because a couple weeks ago, the highest VINs that we would have seen were probably around that 14,000 range. Today, the highest VINs being reported are in the 19,000 range. We know that not every vehicle identification number gets made, so 12,000 being produced on a high VIN number of 19,000 seems relatively plausible to me. But again, if this was a couple weeks ago, maybe a bit less plausible. We'll again revisit delivery numbers closer to the end of the quarter. Lastly, today is a report on California regulations from the Sacramento Bee, which says that, quote, California's air pollution agency this week is poised to pass a rule that would require truck manufacturers to cut their production of gas-powered vehicles by more than half over the next 15 years and instead sell battery and hydrogen-powered machines, end quote. Also adding, quote, it's working on another regulation that would go even further, requiring large organizations like corporations and government agencies to mix more electric trucks in their fleets, end quote. This could be another potential tailwind for the semi, as we know that Tesla starts to prepare to get the semi to volume production. Not that I think that Tesla has too much to worry about there on the demand side. Nevertheless, we'll try to keep an eye out for any updates on that later this week. That'll wrap it up for today, though. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Tuesday, June 23rd episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.